Hey everybody, my name is Laura Mary Lindley. This is my husband, Derek Lindsley, and I am going to be teaching him a Foundations Yoga class. Oftentimes when you see a Foundations Yoga class online or on a yoga studio schedule, it might read beginner class and they can oftentimes end up being much more than a Foundations class and more of a difficult class. This is going to stay true to the foundations, and so it's an all levels accessible class with heavy prop use and modifications. So with that said, make sure you have something similar to a bolster here. It could just be blankets or towels that you kind of bundle up and use as a support. And then blocks, one or two blocks would be great, as well as a strap. Thank you. And these are some props that we use on the yoga mat to make poses more accessible and then also to allow us to go deeper into a pose or find better alignment or perhaps uh, let go in a pose a little bit more to achieve the benefits of the props. Without further ado, let's get started and go ahead and grab both of your blocks. We are going to begin in child's pose, Balasana. So with your blocks, few options here. Option one is if your hips are tight, you can set this right behind your heels beneath your glutes. Yep, that way or the wide way if your knees go wider. And Derek has set his knees up to the wide edges of the mat here. And then he's going to extend his arms forward to lower his forehead to the ground. If shoulders are tight or chest is tight, a block can meet your forehead to the ground. So go ahead and lift your forehead up and just start with this block here. I'll scooch it back for you. Good. Right away in child's pose, start to focus on your breath. Take a deep inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Good. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. All right. If even still this pose is getting a little bit uncomfortable for your shoulders or your chest, feel free to prop up to your forearms on both sides. That's another great option. Otherwise, if your shoulders and chest will allow for it, go ahead and walk your hands further forward so as to reach a little bit further forward, stretching out your triceps muscles, your back muscles. This pose is great for warming up the hips slowly and opening the low back, warming up the tops of the feet, you're stretching your quads. But more than anything, you're just kind of tapping in to your yoga practice. Noticing your breath. Good. And then if you start to feel warm, go ahead and place the forehead block and or the hip block down and off to the side and see how it feels without those prop assistance now. You can lean one if you feel you need it. For anyone practicing without those props, particularly back block, sink your hips down towards your heels, feel your back elongate, good, and now I want you to seal your lips, take an inhale through your nose, with your lips sealed, exhale through your nose, and this is called ujjayi breath, it's really effective in activating your parasympathetic nervous system which is going to help with overall healing that's happening in your body, relaxation, relief of anxiety, just kind of coming down from any high stress. Okay, last breath here, inhale, exhale, good. Your next breath in, crawl forward, tabletop pose on your breath in, stack your shoulders over wrists and your hips right over knees. This one right away can be a lot 
for athletes with tight wrists. If you have carpal tunnel syndrome in your wrist, this can be a lot. So option one is to prop up onto your fists like this. Good. If this is still too much, you can always lower down to your forearms. And then lastly, you can use the bolster and put the bolster beneath your forearms if that feels most comfortable. Good, so whichever you want there is perfect. We're gonna move into cat cow pose. So without full body weight bearing, inhale, drop your belly down, lift your chest up, glide the shoulder blades towards your spine, opening the chest. Exhale, push the ground away, lift up between the shoulder blades, so now you're drawing them out towards the sides laterally. Good. Inhale, cow, draw shoulder blades together, retraction. Exhale, cat, push the ground away and you're protracting the shoulder blades, creating space posteriorly. Continue to move through your cat cow here, breathing in as you come into cow. Breathe out, push the ground away, cinch in around the belly, cat. Good. And then you can also start to add on in any way that could be moving the neck in a way that feels good, could be moving a little bit in the frontal plane like Derek's doing side to side. Good. One more cycle. Inhale. Big exhale. Great. Next breath in. Come back to neutral in your spine. Tuck your toes. Downward facing dog, lift your hips nice and high. Good, this is a pose that we are so often in, in a yoga class. And if you're not aligning yourself optimally, it can be maybe your least favorite pose. So let's talk about the basics here. Theoretically, from your cat-cow, your hands should be set up to position you correctly for the shoulders. That is, in your cat cow, they were shoulder width distance apart, and now they should still roughly be shoulder width distance apart. Good. New, new yogis and beginner students, or just students that are feeling a little uh, reticent about going deep in poses, they might put too much weight forward on their hands, where the goal is really to start anchoring the weight down towards your heels, thereby elongating through the spine. Good, now start to cinch in around the waist. Good. Give your knees a heavy bend like Derek has. He's a yoga instructor, so he might start to add some adjustments even before I say them. Keeping those little bends in your knees to relieve any tension in the hamstrings that might pull on the low back. Good. Take one more deep inhale. Full exhale, relaxing the shoulders. And now inhale, look forward at your hands. Exhale and take as many steps as you need to get to the top of your mat so that your feet are right behind your wrists. And go ahead and reach for opposite elbow. Good. Again, find a heavy bend in your knees. If the hamstrings are tight, it will pull on your pelvis posteriorly, which could create more compression and tightness in the low back. So bending your knees relieves that. This pose is really intended to release the low back. Good, and to start to engage and relax and stretch these deep back muscles, we can come into this flexion position in our upper body and even the fists, and you can flex here. And this will cause these low back muscles, the deep intrinsic back muscles, to relax a little bit. Start to shift your weight into, towards your toes. And relax your head, you can shake it up. Yes, no, good. Yeah, another inversion, so extra, extra blood flow is flowing down towards your head and your brain. Relax your face, last breath. Drop your hands down to the mat. Walk your feet together to touch, so your big toes touch and there's a little sliver of space, one pinky width distance between your heels. Inhale, halfway lift, bring your hands up onto your shins. Find a long spine here. Good, pause, good, Derek. So draw your shoulder blades gently back and together. Lengthen through the collarbone and see how straight his neck is, that's perfect. So the neck is obviously an extension of the spine, it's part of the spine. Be aware of the mid thoracic region and collapsing there. He's nicely hugged in around anteriorly, and this is just a nice extension 
uh, flat line here. Okay, deep inhale. Exhale, fold again, bending your knees. Good, and then one big long breath, one vertebra at a time, roll all the way up to stand. Inhale, Tadasana, mountain pose, take your arms high to the sky, and relax there. Good, I want you now to take your hands onto your hips, and just do a, a, an alignment check, a self-alignment check. So if the bones that you feel on your fingertips at the front of your hips there are tipping forward, you're more anteriorly tilted. If the, they're not tipping forward, but rather maybe more neutral or posteriorly tilted like this, I want you to find your neutral. Okay, it might take, you have that anterior tip a little bit more core engagement anteriorly. Derek looks pretty darn neutral here, so he's gonna just stay as he is. Just bring some awareness, so pull the belly back. Good, now relax your arms down by your side. So the shoulders are relaxed, the neck is relaxed, collarbone is nice and long, so his chest is open. Keeping the core engaged, he's gonna press down once again through his feet and take a big inhale, come up to Tadasana Mountain Pose. Still relaxing shoulders down away from ears, lifting up through the crown. Good. Now, bring some awareness to your feet, spread through your toes, and really feel all four corners of your feet firmly press down into the mat. One more inhale. Just wrapping your stinkies in, and then exhale, swan dive down. Take your arms wide, hinge from your hips, and fold forward. Again, bend your knees. Inhale, breath, halfway lift. Lift your head up above your heart. Exhale, and this is a bigger pose. Plant your hands, step your feet back, high plank. High plank, so straight away, there are many modifications. First and foremost, drop your knees. Good. Especially early on, it can be too much wrist extension. So Derek's gone ahead and dropped his knees. How about you all drop your knees as well? Cinch it around the belly and the waistline to protect the low back. And then find an inhale breath. Extend forward half an inch or so. Exhale lower, mid plank. So you don't want to go any lower than these blocks. Good. Push back up. Woo! That's tough work. So Chaturanga is the most difficult pose to correct the alignment on. These blocks serve as a tool to just make sure your shoulder doesn't dip below elbow height. And his elbows are a little bit higher than these blocks, so he's gonna even stay a little bit higher than these blocks. Inhale, extend. Exhale, chaturanga, lower. Push back up. And that is super awesome. When he lowers on the next one, Focus on opening the chest still and lengthening the collarbone. Last one, breathe in. Exhale, lower chaturanga. Inhale, push up. And on your next exhale, I want you to come all the way down to your belly, okay? All the way down, good. Cobra Bhujangasana. Cobra Bhujangasana is a really inviting way to come into a heart opener, good, and then come back down to your belly. Great. This is a really inviting way that's not full weight bearing to open the chest, um, but to be very aware of the low back and the lumbar spine and warm it up sequentially. So to begin, his feet can either be together or wider, okay, or wider. So play with both. We're going to do three rounds of this. Again, theoretically, if you set up your plank correctly, your hands should be set up roughly to a bend right beneath the shoulders initially. So when, when he pushes up into Cobra, it should be set to go. On his next inhale, he's gonna press down through the tops of his feet, start to lift his chest up. Inhale, Cobra, pause. Retract the shoulder blades, good. His chest is nice and open, cinching around the belly to protect any compression at all in the low back. One more, inhale. Exhale, lower down to your belly. Good. And we're gonna do two more of those. All right. So a few things here that are really benefiting us. His pelvis is gonna be posteriorly tilting. So often if you sit or if you drive a lot, we're in an anteriorly tilted position. So this posterior tilt is really beneficial for the back muscles. So focusing on that on this next one. Inhale, lift up, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Think of pushing your pubic bone down 
And then really feel this back bend transcend out of the lumbar, but up into the thoracic. Good. And exhale, lower down. Good. On this last one, as he continues to engage the deep abdominal muscles, he's going to feel the skin start to tighten anteriorly. And that's fine. And keep feeling that opening come all the way up through the mid thoracic region. And we're going to talk about the shoulder blade. So inhale, cobra. Lift on up. Now really retract the shoulder blades, opening the chest. Don't worry about how deep you go, but think of inviting this opening to the chest, breathing deeply. Exhale, lower. Awesome. Take a breath in, push up tabletop or plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Down dog again, rescan your alignment here. Feel the energy draw down towards your heels. Okay, good. And just enjoy the gentle benefits of uh, an inversion here. Take one more deep inhale. Exhale. Good. And we're going to do two full cycles of sun A. Breathe and look forward. Exhale, step forward, bring your feet together to touch. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hold. Inhale, Tadasana, mountain pose, reach all the way up. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Good. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, Chaturanga. And just one this time, your shoulders should be a lot warmer. Avoid letting them roll inwards. Cobra, as you're ready, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Good. Take one breath and down dog. Exhale. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or hop to the top. <laughs> Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Tadasana. Reach up high to the sky. Feel your core engage. Exhale, Uttanasana. Fold it forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, Chaturanga. Plant your hands. Step your feet back. Feel the collarbones lengthen at the bottom. And then breathe into Cobra. Bhujangasana, opening your chest and heart space. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. So any pose, such as cobra, or even upward facing dog, where we're lengthening the hip flexors and inviting a gentle back bend, even a heart opener, it's an antidote to what we are so often doing in modern life, which is sitting or texting or rounding our shoulders forward and typing. This pose is just inviting the opposite, opening everything up, lengthening the hip flexors. So think of breathing in that space every time you come into this opposite pose. Take a full breath in, look forward. Exhale, step to the top, bring your feet together to touch. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Reach your arms high. So I should note here, every time you get to the top of the mat, he's already been doing it, so I didn't cue it, but you want to have your feet together to touch. Big toes to touch. Little sliver of space between the heels. One or two fingers. But for extra stability, you can always widen your base of support and bring your feet hips with distance. This becomes especially true in a pose like chair pose where I'm having him hold it right now, which can be very hard. Good, so know that's an option. Peek down over your knees and make sure you can see all 10 toes. Good, so his weight just shifted back towards the heels a little bit more. Let your arms roughly work towards framing your face, but if that's too much, you can cactus your arms like this. You could even bring hands to opposite shoulder if you have a shoulder problem, an issue, or injury. Really feel the weight back in the heels, and you can play with potentially even lifting your toes up. Awesome. Take another deep inhale. 
Exhale, fold forward, hinge from your hips. Let your head drop down and everything relaxes. And then neutralizing, inhale, halfway lift, lift up again. Exhale, chaturanga. You can always skip your chaturanga, hold a plank and take down dog. Or after chaturanga, cobra, pujangasana. Exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome. From your downward facing dog, we're gonna have a nice slow warm up to start to warm some of these bigger muscles up in our body. Inhale, lift your right leg high to the sky. Good. If you've never um, done a three-legged dog, which is this pose, Derek's doing it perfectly. You wanna keep your hips square. The way to keep your hips square is to make sure the pinky toe is pointing straight down to the mat. So it's not about lifting your leg as high as it can go at all but rather think of aligning and squaring the hip, activating this whole posterior chain. Take another inhale. Exhale, step your foot through, low lunge. He again did a perfect step forward, but go ahead and step back like six inches. If this is where you let your foot landed, you might need to assist it forward by taking your one hand, right hand in this case, towards your foot and just kind of helping it forward to get aligned. Good, he's gonna stack his right knee 90 degrees, well, right on top of his right ankle so that his knee joint is forming 90 degree angle. Now, coming up to his fingertips or using the blocks here. Okay, let's give you the blocks like this. You can put it on any level. So this is a full body pose. Initially, his back knee might stay bent, especially if the hip flexors are feeling really tight or the quadriceps muscles and the interior thigh are feeling tight, a micro bend in the knee is fine. The goal is to eventually press that back leg straight so the knee extends as well. And continuing to lengthen the chest and torso forward, opening the heart. Good, this full body pose, press down through the right foot. Imagine lifting up through the back hamstring. Good, cinch in around the belly, take one more inhale. And you can leave the blocks as they are right there if you'd like or push them off to either side and just step back downward facing dog good inhale left leg high three-legged dog again keep the hips square so if you do not turn off the external rotators and you have tighter glutes tighter hamstring muscles your hip will externally rotate your toes will point off to the side over there Keeping your hips square is going to activate these posterior muscles. Take another deep inhale, engage the core. Exhale, low lunge. Again, you can assist the foot forward. Fingertips to the mat or hands on blocks is perfect. And this is a big pose. I didn't mention on the first side, but feel free to drop the back knee if it feels like too much weight or too much balance. <laughs> Good. So this pose is a preparatory pose for all the other standing poses. We still have three or four points of contact with the ground here, I guess indirectly if you're using the blocks. So not as much weight is on any two limbs. We're evenly distributing it, but there is a focus on balance. There's balance involved. So start to tap into the core muscles, pull the belly muscles up away from the left thigh, and now start to focus on lengthening the torso forward, opening the chest, press down through the fingertips. One more inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog, set the blocks over to one side. Good. Inhale, breath, lift the right leg high. Exhale, breath, low lunge, step the right foot forward. Good, inhale in your low lunge, chest forward. Good, and on your exhale, drop the left knee to the mat. Good, inhale, modified crescent lunge. Take your arms high to the sky and pause there. All right, so for those of you who have open hip flexors, your hips might instinctively start to fall down towards the ground. Rather than immediately go to that, I want you to find these 90 degree angles through both your hips and your knees here. So that means taking the torso back in space and really effectively lengthening that left side hip flexor 
by lifting up through the fingertips, pull the belly up and in, press down through the front right heel, and the ball mount of the big toe. Good, just taking one more inhale. And on your exhale, come back to low lunge. Plant your hands down and lift the left knee up off of the mat. Take a breath again in low lunge, chest forward, lift up through your heart, downward facing dog, exhale. Awesome. Inhale, lift left leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, low lunge, guide the left foot forward. Good, take one breath in low lunge, keeping the back knee lifted. Exhale and lower your back knee to the mat. Inhale, modified crescent lunge, reach your arms high. Pause there, good. The focus again is on both lengthening the spine but warming up the right side hip flexor. I sit at a desk a lot of the time as well and I find that my hip flexors from sitting can get quite tight. The hip flexor, the iliopsoas, our main hip flexor muscle, originated from the lumbar spine, a portion of it, the psoas major, and it comes down along with the iliacus muscle in our pelvis and then inserts onto the femur, crossing the anterior hip joint. So by Derek pulling in on the anterior side of his belly, pushing back towards the back side of his body, and engaging the core, he's effectively stretching this hip flexor along with his quadriceps muscle. And he's a runner, so this can also get tight if you're a runner. Lift up your fingertips, take one more inhale. Exhale, place your hands down, low lunge. Lifting the right knee. Inhale, extend the chest forward. Exhale, downward facing dog. Find two breaths in down dog. We're almost ready to do some bigger, stronger standing poses with just two feet on the ground. Take one more breath in. Exhale. Inhale, reach your right leg high to the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, low lunge, step your right foot forward. Spin your left foot flat to the mat, and inhale, come up, warrior two. Tee out your arms to either side. Stack your right knee right over right ankle, and as you set up through your feet here, use the middle of the mat as a gauge. Align your foot with that middle of the mat, and if I were to draw a line from Derek's right heel straight back, it should bisect roughly the middle of his back foot. Feel free to turn the back toe slightly forward to internally rotate the thigh if your hip is feeling tighter. Good. Otherwise, just press down through the feet. Imagine that strength starting to transcend up into the torso. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, Chaturanga, plant your hands, step your right foot back. Inhale, Cobra or Up Dog. Exhale, Downward Facing Dog. Good. Inhale, left leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, low lunge, step your right foot forward. Spin the right foot flat. Inhale, Warrior Two, rise up to stand. Again, tee out your arms, hold on your exhale, start to sit a little bit deeper. Good. So the modification through the back foot is still an option, turning toes forward. Working up the chain, make sure the back knee is extended straight and the front knee is pointing straight over the front uh, second middle toe. Good. With your front thigh, imagine, visualize wrapping it out to the left side of the mat external rotation and open your shoulders fully to the side. Take another inhale, Chaturanga, exhale, plant your hands, step your foot back, mid plank. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, and we're just going to flow that one time, one breath, one movement. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, low lunge, step forward. Inhale, breath, warrior two, rise up, invite opening. Exhale, chaturanga or downward facing dog, whatever your body is asking for. Inhale, up dog, if you took chaturanga or cobra. 
Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, breath, lift the left leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, warrior two. Press through your feet, open through your chest. Exhale, chaturanga or downward facing dog. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome. Inhale, lift the right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, low lunge, step right foot forward. Inhale, reverse warrior. Spin the left foot flat, and like you're coming up through warrior two, come on up, but then lift the right arm up towards the sky. Good. So, this pose is an add-on from your warrior two, and it's all about inviting spaciousness through the side body. So from your hip all the way up to the shoulder, stay mindful of relaxing the back shoulder and truly seeing in a side bend. So if you find you're drawing your right shoulder towards the right side of the mat and back bending, check yourself by taking the right shoulder towards the left side of the mat, just slightly pulling the left shoulder back. Good, Derek. Take one more. Inhale, lift up. Exhale. Let's come to downward facing dog. Plant your hands, step your right foot back. Downward facing dog. Our shoulders are definitely warm enough. Inhale, left leg high, three legged dog. Exhale, low lunge, step right foot forward. Inhale, warrior two, rise on up. The same foot alignment is practiced here. Out, oh, rather, reverse warrior. And pause. Awesome. Again, always as a protection for the low back and lumbar spine, pull the belly up and in. Soften through the back shoulder. And though you're not looking forward at the front knee, keep the external rotation of the front thigh. Which brings me to your gaze. You can gaze either up at your left hand or oftentimes looking back over the right shoulder at your back foot is a nice way to ensure that you're not back bending in the pose. Take one more breath in, lift up and lengthen. Chaturanga or down dog as you exhale. Let's step back to down dog. Good. Inhale, right leg high, three-legged dog. Low lunge, exhale. Reverse warrior, inhale. Lift the right arm up and back. Exhale, extended side angle. Take the right arm forward and down. And prop your right elbow up onto the right thigh while taking the left arm high to the sky. Good. So your right thigh serves as sort of a prop in a way, but be conscious of how much weight you're putting down on the thigh. Still want you to activate this lower left or lower right side of the core muscles. Lift up away from the thigh. Good, Derek. The left hip is fully extended, as is the knee. Keep pointing your right knee straight forward. One more, inhale. Big exhale. Warrior two, come on up, breathe in. Downward facing dog, exhale. Good. Inhale, breath, lift the left leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, extend this side angle. Right arm high. Good. Pause here. So pull the belly back. Soften through your face. Class is starting to get hard for sure. I'm sweating and I'm not even teaching the class. Feel this link from the back foot all the way up to the crown. So your neck is long, your back is long. Last breath, inhale. Big exhale. Inhale, warrior two, rise up. Exhale, downward facing dog, hands come down. Good. Inhale. Exhale. Bring your knees down to the mat. Come on into child's pose, extended child's pose. Bring your knees wide. Tops of your feet are going to touch down. Sink your hips back towards your heels and rest your forehead to the mat. And start to pay attention to your breath. Slow it down. Breathe in. And breathe out. One more. It's okay. 
breathe out. All right. On your next inhale, come back up to a seated position. This is the time to grab a sip of water, take a break for a moment, towel off if you're sweating. Do you want some water? You're good? Okay. And we're going to go into just a little bit of core um, because it's so important. So everybody can start somewhere with core work. Can you sit down for me? <laughs> he wants to participate. Okay, we're going to do a plank pose. With plank pose, you have the option to bring your knees down. You can do it from your forearms or uh, from your hands. From your hands is a lot of wrist extension. It can be a lot on both the wrist and even the shoulder. So let's start with your forearms down, okay? All right, so as you sit up for plank pose, set your feet up hips width distance apart and start with your knees down, okay? We're gonna be layer one with the knees down. Interlace your fingers, roughly stack your shoulders over your elbows. And the weakest link in a plank pose is, as always, the low back. So countering this collapsing of the low back region by Pulling up and in deeply into those abdominal muscles is really crucial. Also crucial is that posterior tilt that we spoke about in Tadasana. So almost imagine tucking your tailbone down right here and push the ground away. Hold it here. If you, if you feel pretty solid here, feel free to lift your knees up. You won't hold it for that long. I'm actually going to time it, so don't worry. Good. And through this period, keep breathing. Okay, push up towards my hand, if you can imagine that, good, push down through the elbows, through the pinky side of your hands, neck long, breath strong, last breath, and bring your knees on down, good, so the core is awakened, now I want you to come up to your hands, swing your legs on through, and forward, seated Baddha Konasana, bring the soles of your feet together, and your knees out wide. Five. And pause here, you can take your hands onto your feet and, and or as Derek has it, hands on kind of the medial ankle bone there and press your elbows down onto your thighs to help with this external rotation. So he's really opening and stretching his adductor muscles and his inner thighs. Now he's gonna lift up through the chest Option to stay right here, or you can start to hinge forward slightly. So this is a really good stretch for the adductor muscles. Also the hip muscles. Take another deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Now I want you to cross your ankles. Point your hands forward and step your feet back downward facing dog. This can be uncomfortable, so feel free to swing your legs back and just step back to down dog as well. Downward facing dog, we're going to go into some more strong standing poses and a twist. Take a deep inhale, lift the right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, low lunge, step your foot forward right between your hands. Inhale, crescent lunge, high lunge, so take your arms high to the sky. He's going to keep his back knee lifted. I know that this just got a lot harder. Feel free to again drop the back knee to the mat. For now, go ahead and keep it lifted if this feels comfortable. It's the same as your low lunge with the knee lifted. Stack your shoulders right over hips, front knee over front ankle. And again, you can micro bend this back knee with the goal then being, as you get warmer, to straighten and extend the knee, lifting the hamstring up towards the sky. Good, Derek. Take one more. Inhale, lift up through the chest. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center and lengthen forward. Pull the belly up off the right thigh and then twist to the right. Revolve crescent lunge twist. Anchor your elbow to the outer thigh. Stack your palms like you're high-fiving them. And holding this leg alignment, again, it gets more precarious with the knee lifted. You can always drop it down for more balance. Good. As we twist, we're working to twist in this mid-thoracic region. So pull the belly in tight. Inhale, lengthen. Last exhale, twist. Look down at your right foot. 
Place your hands down to the mat, runner's lunge. Move your right foot to the right side of the mat. Drop your left knee to the mat. Stay up on your hands, or you can come down to your forearms. And we're just gonna take one breath here. Inhale, exhale. Good. Breathe in. On your inhale, come back up to your hands, tuck your left toes, and lift the left knee, lizard pose. So the left knee is lifted. So this is amplifying our low lunge from the beginning of practice and making it a little bit more of a hip opener now. Just press through the palms, take a breath. Exhale, downward facing dog, step your right foot back, hips nice and high. Inhale, left leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, low lunge, step right foot forward. Inhale, crescent lunge on Jane Asana. Take your arms high. We talked about the legs on the first side. Now on this side, I want you to think of squaring your shoulders forward. Find Tadasana pose through your upper torso, through your arms. Lengthen through the collarbone and relax your face. Relax your neck. Good. Avoid letting the left knee wander towards the midline. Keep pointing it straight forward. One more inhale. Exhale, hands through heart center, lengthen forward. Revolve crescent lunge, twist to the left. Hook your right elbow now to the left thigh. Push through your palms. And then ultimately, one day, when the upper back really is inviting it enough, the thumbs can align with the midline and your sternum. But take your time getting there. We don't want this twisting motion to happen in the lumbar spine, but rather higher up. Take another deep inhale. Exhale to deepen and twist. Look down, runner's lunge. Place your hands down, move the left foot wide. Drop your back knee to the mat. And take two breaths here. Breathe in. Breathe out, relax your head. You can always deepen by coming down to forearms. Last breath. Inhale, come back up to your hands. Lizard pose with the right knee up off the mat. Exhale, downward facing dog. Use your core to step your left foot back. Hips nice and high. And then as you take your next natural exhale, root down through the heels. Ground down. Beautiful. Inhale, look to the top of your mat. Exhale, step to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, cut off on a mountain pose. Stand high, tall. Exhale, hands to heart, samasutiki. Close your eyes. And just mentally, without giving yourself a visual, physical test, notice where your body is in space. Notice if your pelvis is anteriorly tilted or posteriorly tilted or more in control. Notice your breathing, any tightness in your chest, shoulders. Gently, gently retract the scapula. Lift through your crown from one more breath. Keep your eyes open. Tree pose, Vrikshasana. This pose is going to gently help open the hips. Ground down through your right foot and lift the left foot up to either kickstand your foot on the mat, bring it to your calf, the medial aspect of your right calf, or you can use your hands and position the foot to become up higher than the knee joint to the inner right thigh. Awesome. And then let's start with hands on hips. Good, so this isn't a hip opener. It is going to be opening his left hip, outer hip, and the front of his right hip. So as his foot is pressing onto his inner thigh, I want you guys to press your inner thigh back into your foot so you're not disengaging outer right hip muscles. And rather than disengage, I want you to really engage and fire up so as to stand taller. Good, now option to take hands to heart. Or really up level and challenge your balance, reach your arms high to the sky. Awesome. 
This is a pose that can vary day to day based on how much you slept, what you did in your day, where your focus is, your mind is, how present you are. Take one more breath. Put your knee back to the front and exhale. Place your hands to heart, set your foot down, and we're going to switch sides. Ground down now through your left foot, spread through the toes, tree pose, Brikshasana, lift your right foot up. Match the position that you placed your left foot on that first side. So the big disclaimer with this pose is that you never want to put your foot right on the knee joint because it's not wanting to move at all in this frontal plane towards the side. As best you can, continue to point the knee, in this case the right knee, out towards the right side of your mat. Starting with hands on hips really helps everything kind of hug in towards your midline, cueing the left hip to pull midline, and the inner left thigh to push into the right foot, the right foot to push into the inner thigh. And once that's all really zipped up, bring your hands to heart, lift through the crown, and maybe take arms high to the sky. This is an excellent pose to track your progress on the yoga mat and also just mentally where you are. It's a pose that when you track it, you can experience these gains and growth when you see how far you've come in your balance and or your, your mental focus. Every little wobble through the ankle is just your body building more expertise in proprioception and kinesthetic awareness. Take another breath. Point your knee back to the front, breathe in. And exhale, hands through heart, set your foot back down. Two feet on the ground, relax your legs. All right, good. Inhale, Tadasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold, bend your knees. Good, inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, downward facing dog this time. Just step right on back. And inhale, right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, low lunge, step your right foot forward. Inhale, warrior two, come on up to stand. Good, now on your exhale, straighten out the front leg all the way, pause. Square your shoulders towards the side of the room and really lift up and lengthen through the side body. Keep your feet rooted, your hips rooted, and start to reach your right arm as far forward as it will go. When you can no longer reach forward, leave your torso and just simply drop the right arm. Let it fall wherever it falls. Triangle. Beautiful. Now take the left arm high so your shoulders are roughly stacking. Great. The biggest mistake that beginner yogis and new students and even experienced students make is that they bring the right hand down too far. Okay. And that is counterproductive for the low back, for the overall pose, especially for the back and what we're trying to achieve here. Good. Lengthen through the back. Open through your chest. Lengthen the collarbone. Squeeze the left glute as you're extending that left hip. Take another breath. Rebend the right knee. Inhale, warrior two. Rise up. Exhale, pivot the right toes to face the left side of the mat. Bring your hands onto your hips. Now, anybody who's tighter in the hamstrings, it doesn't seem intuitive, but a wider, longer stance makes it more accessible. You can either lengthen your stance to make it more accessible or do a few other options I'm going to offer here. Take a breath in. Exhale, prasarita padottanasana, hinge from your hips and fold down towards the mat. Good. Now, a great option is Derek can release his hands down towards the mat if they don't reach. So they do reach, but if they don't, you can place your hands on blocks. You could, and we're going to do this, treat this in a way like a wide-legged downward facing dog, like a very wide-legged down dog, and use your hands on blocks here. And just gently push your hips and guide back, guide them back. Good. Another great option is to bend the knees. As always, that will lessen the pull on the hamstrings and their proximal attachment to the ischial tuberosity, which is ultimately going to help with just this lengthening of those muscles without tugging on the whole back, okay? 
Enjoy this gentle stretch on the outer ankles. And you're strengthening the quadriceps in this pose as they work to find stability for you in this balance. Relax the shoulders, the neck, and just enjoy some of the benefits of this inversion. On your next inhale, come up halfway. So lifting up to fingertips, broaden through the chest. Exhale, crawl to the front of your mat and come to a low lunge. Good. Take a breath in, extend the chest forward, downward facing dog, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, hold. Straighten out the left leg. Inhale. And again, orient shoulders to the side. He's going to start to reach as far forward as he can. And when he can't reach farther, he leaves his torso, just drops his arm. Perfect. Okay, so when we don't do this, what tends to happen is the student's torso will start to wander this way, which then is going to ultimately compress in the low back. And we don't want that. So we want this nice long line, triangle here, triangle here, and then a triangle from top hand, all the way down through the back heel and up. One more breath here. This looks excellent. Big exhale. Start to bend the left knee again. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, pivot the left toes to face the side. Bring your hands onto your hips or interlace your fingers Behind the back, you want to stretch the chest and shoulders. And on your exhale, prasarita, padottanasana, hinge from your hips, fold forward. You might notice some cracks and creaks in your body as you move through various poses. The rule of thumb is if it doesn't hurt, then it's normal and it's natural. Observe how everything feels on this side. So now that you have dynamically moved and stretched. Notice how the hamstrings feel on the second side. Can you relax your neck more? Can you breathe a little bit deeper into this pose? And then find some gentle engagement of the low belly and the abdominal muscles. Good. As always in any fold, you can come into a upper body flexion position. So through the elbows, even the hands and the fingers, you can flex to allow the deep back muscles to relax into this stretch. Take one more breath. Lift up halfway, inhale. Low lunge to the front, crawl forward, exhale. Finishing in your low lunge, just one breath in. Downward facing dog, exhale. Good. Look forward and step through, come to a seat. All right, the best part. Extend your legs long in front of you. Reach your arms high to the sky. You can grab your strap. And then as you exhale, hinge from your hips, reach towards the feet either with your hands or with a strap. Good, so a few options here. Again, I think you know by now you can always bend the knees, always. Draw the tops of your feet back towards your shins. So you're dorsiflexing in the ankle here. Good. Extend through the toes. Keep your back nice and straight. Pull the belly up and in. Last breath. One tip, if your knees are all the way straight, you can engage the quads to reflexively inhibit the hamstrings and let you go deeper. Good, rise back up, set the strap side and I want you to come on down to your back, okay? All right, so next up we are going to come into a bridge pose. Anchor your feet down. Good. So set your feet up hips with distance apart, stacking your knees roughly over heels, look up at the ceiling, and on your inhale, push through the heels, engage your glutes, lift your hips. Layer one. Next layer, start to interlace your fingers, 
at the low back, walking your hands closer. And if this is tight at all in the shoulders, too tight anywhere in the shoulders, just forget about this step. Go ahead. Breathe here. Beautiful. Again, another pose that's great at countering our typical posture of sitting. So the hips are in this extended position. So that's why we're activating the glutes, the hamstring muscles, this chest is open. So start to teach your nervous system that you can be in this more open, vulnerable position and that you are safe and okay. Teaching your nervous system by taking some deep breaths. One more breath. Release your hands. Slowly lower your hips on down. Awesome. Hug your knees now into your chest. All the way in. Good. And see if you can bring your knees comfortably together. Maybe even wrapping your forearms up around your shins. This is a stretch for the deep back between your L4, L5 region and the lumbar spine. Really lengthening everything out. Last breath. Good. And then now set your feet down once again. Option to do another round of bridge there. You can even add in a block. We're going to move on now and come into a hip stretch. Okay, so supine figure four. Cross your right ankle over the left thigh, like so. Thread your hands, right hand in between the legs, left hand comes in laterally, and grab, Derek's grabbing anteriorly on the knee, which is totally fine, um, or you can grab posteriorly on the knee thigh there. Okay, either way. Let your head relax back. Want the bolster? And just relax. You can add on to this pose in small ways like rocking side to side. You could also use your right elbow to assist in that external rotation of the right thigh. But mostly just relax into it and let your breath deepen. Take another breath. Feel free to pause and continue this hold as long as you'd like. Release here and go ahead and switch sides. Cross left ankle over right thigh. Thread your left hand between the legs and behind the right knee. Right hand is going to meet the left. Relax your head down. There's really nothing more you need to see, especially because you've done that first side. So go ahead and close your eyes. And... Observe what comes up for you here as you open the hips. We feel so much in our body and a lot of times we can store it in our hips. It's a muscle that reflexively tightens when we're anxious, our psoas, which is part of the sympathetic nervous system's response to fur fight or flight to prep us to run from a predator. So when we feel chronic stress or little small doses of stress, our hip flexors can get tight. Add that to modern life and we are maybe more on the tight end with our hip flexors. You can pause and hold this stretch a little longer. Otherwise, come on out. Now targeting a different part of the hips, come into happy baby pose. Float your feet high to the sky. I have, I work with plenty of students who cannot touch their toes here. So go ahead and bring your hands onto your shins, even lower up towards the knees, even higher, I mean, towards the knees. I work with people who just barely pass the knees, and this is a fine place to be. You're still achieving the hip opening. You're stretching the adductor muscles. You're, you're uh, massaging the low back if you add a rock side to side. But yes, if this is easily met with you, this alignment, walk your hands down the shins and up towards the feet and even the soles of the feet to deepen. And you can bring your ankle into dorsiflexion. And for anyone that's feeling a little bit more open at this point in their hamstrings, you can straighten one leg. And then alternate and straighten the other. And then I'll 
also assisting in this deep stretch in the deep back muscles like multifidus. Rock side to side on your back. Iron your tailbone down towards the ground. Last breath. Release your feet. Exhale. Hug your knees to chest. Draw your knees over to the left side of your mat, supine twist. Extend your right arm out to the side. Let your right shoulder melt down. Now gaze to the right hand. And then once you're aligned here, go ahead and close your eyes. This pose becomes more about letting go into the twist than about perfecting alignment in it. Good. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Hug your knees back to center. Switch sides on your exhale. Draw your knees to the right. Extend the left arm out to the side. <laughs> and soften the left shoulder down. Close your eyes. Nothing you need to see. Where can you let go a little bit more in this pose? Maybe you feel this stretch in your IT bands. Maybe it's up by the left shoulder. Or maybe even your neck. Think about where you're unnecessarily holding tension. And again, not on the alignment in it, because you're set up well. Think of where you can let go a little bit more. With your eyes closed, just in your mind's eye, observe that and breathe into it, soften into it. Last breath. Hug your knees back to center. Give yourself a squeeze. Good. Now we're going to finish with this big squeeze. Hug everything in tight, tight, tight. Deep inhale. The most important pose for a foundation class, Shavasana exhale. Put your legs out. Flip your palms up by your side. As you float your legs out, you can take them as wide as you'd like with your heels angled in and your toes angling out. Relax your shoulders. Start to invite a gentle awareness back to your breath just as you began. This is a foundation class. I'm introducing foundations of topics and thoughts. And a big foundation of yoga is meditation. Shavasana, corpse pose, invites the yoga student, the yoga practitioner, into a state of meditation. It's really this connection, threading your physical asana practice and the breath work, the pranayama, into meditation, which is just relaxation of the mind, observation of your mind. So inevitably, as you bring this attention back to your breath, can you relax here? You will start to have some thoughts. Just watch the thoughts, notice them, and avoid judging them. Let them come in, let them come out. Taking your breath again, you're welcome to take an extended Shavasana mountain rest here as long as you'd like. If you're ready to wake up, start to move your fingers, your toes, circle your wrists, circle your ankles. Reach your arms up overhead on your inhale. If you're just waking up, 
Exhale, draw your knees into your chest and roll over to either side. This is a nice, easy way to wake up, lift up from uh, avoiding tension in your back. Supportive fetal position. Rest your cheek on your bicep. And as you're ready to sit up again, take your time, keep your eyes closed, rise up to a seated. Seated Sukhasana. This is a tough pose in and of itself. Crossing your ankles. Allow your knees to soften down towards the mat. Keep your shins on your knees just as they are. Flip your palms up towards the sky. But just receive some energy. Lift up through your crown. Open your chest. Good. And from here. Take your hands to our center. And lift your thumbs up to your third eye. And thank you so much for joining me in this practice today. I hope all of you feel amazing and can take these foundations and practice them more and then add them into your future practices on and off your mat with love and gratitude. Namaste. Thank you.